live. Okay, uh, Steve, uh, we, we have our lights back on now. We're not running in the IR. And uh, Steve, you made some observations while you were uh, filming mm -hmm. through that. What exactly did you see? You saw some additional reflectivity. And yes. I think it's an important thing to point out, so go ahead. On the Target 850 LE10, the screws on the side of the... Okay, I'm glad you pointed these out. Now look at this. Your screws on the side of the... Did they come from the manufacturer yes. that way? Okay, interesting. They were hurting themselves. The screws on the side of the LE10 bracket look like they're stainless steel or chrome or, or mm -hmm. silver. And if they were painted, the paint is worn off. And you can see the screw here to the bracket, and there's a washer here. That's silver, and that's going to be reflective. The, the screw here, the Phillips head here, and the Phillips head here are black, as you have correctly. You have black here, black here, and yeah, I like yeah. the fact that your plate is a black frame. All very, very good things. And it's dull, which is even better. But you have some silver here. And you saw these, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So what we're going to do is, this is a problem. We don't need to do this in the IR. You saw it, and I can do this easily now, so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to veil these little guys. Now this, the, he, yeah, you're going to take this off, uh, and you also your washer here. You have a. You know, we'll just, I'll just veil in the general area. Mm -hmm. here. Get a little bit more. Okay, we're going to veil the. The silver washer and then the silver screw on this side, I think we're okay. And it's pretty cool. We're painting out with a brush. It's like we're photoshopping, but out of the laser. We're subtracting out, and that's how stuff works, yeah. among other things. So, uh, pretty neat. So, I'd like maybe. Before we're done here, Steve, go back dark again and see if these screws look yes. better. Also, uh, with for reflectivity, and, and you, and we talk about some people ask about chrome and things like that. Chrome, uh, chrome doesn't necessarily hurt you. It all depends on how the shape of the chrome and uh, is. And it's oftentimes here's a perfect example. Uh, this curvature creates like a parabolic effect. You see how the light is? I don't know if you can see that, or maybe over here you can see the light gets collected here or here, right on the edge of some of these curvy spaces. So uh, and if it were chrome, that could potentially hurt you. So again, you're not going to have it, uh, a mil, uh, mil spec uh, IR device for sure, but you can accomplish this with a regular flashlight at night. And if you can do it like Steve and I are doing with two people and have somebody shine and illuminate and then direct, you know, you can, you can see, uh, you know, how to subtract out. It works the same way because light is light regardless of the frequency or the wavelength, so uh, it's the same principle. Um, but look for your chrome and you'll see if you have headlights. Now Steve has really gone over the top. He's Mr. Stealth for, uh, for sure. He's removed the, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the chrome or the, uh, the Honda housing here, the, the uh, emblem, uh, and that certainly helps. But certainly I think, particularly with G4, I think we're hopeful that uh, you'll find that putting it on chrome is going to be a lot nicer than what it was with G2, much nicer looking. So. I don't think you need necessarily need to go as far as taking it off, but you can certainly veil them if you find that there are sources of reflection. So, uh, were there any other aspects of this vehicle? Uh, no. Yeah, we're, obviously the plate you're going to see here is blanked out, so you can't see what its numbers are for sure. But when you were viewing this under the IR, you didn't even see this, right? No. So you were seeing the veil. What kind of is this a laser shield? This is oh, a yeah, laser, laser shield. shield. Yeah. So this is a on-track laser shield with one light coat of veil. You don't, again, I go and I say this, you don't need to, and I hope this IR proves that you don't need a lot of veil to do the job. It's very effective at what it does. You don't need a lot to go dark, to make it dark to the eye because it's in the infrared that matters. Uh, and you don't need it to be dark. So you can see this is much lighter in the daytime. You can see there's the blue, I mean the blue, the, the red, and the, and the white, mm -hmm. you can see. But at, and under IR, does it basically look black? You can't read anything. Correct? That's right. Right. So there you go. Uh, you don't need a lot to be effective. And, uh, and I think we're in pretty good shape with this vehicle right now on the front. And if you want to switch around and rotate to the back, if you'd like to look at the hot spots, you know, we got some big punch throughs today with Vail and the ZR4. There could be some hot spots on the back that we don't know about. We can see if we can eliminate them. Okay, uh, one other thing that you, Steve, you actually brought up, and you made an, another interesting observation. You want to share that with us now? Yeah, on the headlight, the passenger, passenger side headlight, you can see um, it's very reflective right there towards the edge. Here? Uh, right, or, yeah, around that area. It's, there's a lot of illumination towards the bottom there. Right, Here? Right, yeah, around that area, okay. yes. 
Uh, and I want to give credit to uh, Staten, who, who really goes to the trouble, and, and maybe he has a very good way of doing this. Uh, we don't, we haven't done this ourselves personally, but I, I know he does, and I think he likes the results he gets more uh, when he does it this way. But I think uh, Mike goes to the trouble of removing the actual housing itself from the vehicle, and that's a little bit of work. So it's like you're getting into custom installs with uh, with jammers and stuff. But at any rate. Uh, I, that, that actually may really pay dividends for him, uh, or for, for individuals who, who do so. Because when you remove the housing, if there are elements of the housing that I didn't quite get with Vail, uh, you know, it may be better to, and if we really want to take it to the nth degree here, nth degree, to remove the light, and then you get all around and all the edges and everything, because, you know, when you're just going like this with the brush, you know, it may not get every bit of edge, but, you know, again, I can't speak to how much that actually contributes. We've never really done a kind of comparison of not doing that or doing that. So, but again, every little bit of not having, you know, of eliminating reflection will add up. You know, all these little small things together in total should make a big impact, impact, impact on the, uh, the passive side of things, uh, whether you go with the jammer or not. So, uh, again, the name of the game is... Is, is, is reducing reflectivity and maximizing the stealth nature of, of, of your vehicle. Live. Okay, we're back under IR illumination. Uh, and we're and they're gone. the screws. They're and, gone? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to step away from the vehicle now. And please uh, do a, uh, a pan again. Mm -hmm. And now you saw before and now you saw after doing finding the hot spots and then eliminating them. How does it look? Good. Other than the jammer heads, what they're eliminating. The annulation? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I wouldn't be too concerned. I wouldn't be concerned about that because if you're running active jammer heads on those things, whether they're LED or laser diode, they're going to be firing anyway. They're destructive interfering pulses. So I don't think that's the problem. The problem in this particular case, in your case, was the fact that you had, you know, and I think you said earlier to me today, Steve, you, you, you've been surprised with your black vehicle why you've had difficulty stealthing. And it's possible with all your jammer heads. And in fact, I'll be quite honest with you. I mean, if, if you've got your, these uh, other four head systems that you're not using, or, or, you know, or any other jammers that you may have more than one jammer combination on, you know, for the real hardcore types, uh, if you're not using them all or, or whatever, and I think we've learned from Escort, uh, and again, I don't really know, I haven't done all these extensive tests, but if you run multiples and a lot of pulses, you could actually hurt your performance by running multiples because you could be interfering with your own destructive pulses by having two independent systems. But I can't say that for sure, and I'm not suggesting that for sure, but certainly if you've got jammer heads on your vehicle that are not being used, for sure. Get rid of them. Got to avail them, and because you can always remove them later with, with a little bit of alcohol and ammonia, you'll be fine. Or remove them, and the brackets that go with them. You want to remove all the reflections. But overall, Steve, do uh, you think we've made some further improvements mm -hmm. here? Now, how much this will actually translate into uh, 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 repeatable numbers in, in, a, in a test uh, or in the real world, I, I can't say for sure, but I, I can say with certainty that. Any source of reflection that you can remove doing something like this will certainly help you. It certainly can't hurt you. 